guys, what is going on? It's Ben again. And for a long time, I really didn't know what to do with this PowerBook G4 after getting it in the mail and boxing it. I was going to do a full review on it. Uh, if you guys still want to see a full review, please let me know in the comments. But I didn't really know what to do with it at the time. It does make a lot of noise. I mean, the case is basically coming apart. And there's really not much use for it. It runs, you know, 10.4 Tiger and has a PowerPC processor, PowerPC G4, running at 500 megahertz, and upgrade to one gigabyte of RAM. So I really didn't know what to do with it, but I had recently bought an IDE hard drive for relatively cheap, and I had the idea to install a version of Linux Mint, um, Linux Mint 11, compiled for the PowerPC processor. Now this was a big, like a huge movement in like the PowerPC platform because it meant you could run new software and basically do more things on an operating system specifically designed for PowerPC that you know is still new and on the market. And although uh, Linux Mint 11 isn't fairly new anymore, uh, I mean, it's much better than Tiger, OS X Tiger. I mean, a lot of programs I really didn't, couldn't do much with 10.4 Tiger, but I could definitely do with Linux Mint 11. So I'm going to go through, you know, how I did it and everything. I'm just going to put that back. And I'm just going to show you guys how I did it, and if you guys want to see a guide on it or, or some sort, please let me know in the comments, and you know, maybe on my Twitter, you should follow me there. But other than that, let's get into the video. So basically, installing this was pretty difficult. I needed a USB thumb drive because the DVD drive was broken, so I had to put in the ISO for PowerPC of the Linux Mint, yeah. So, it wasn't really that hard, just a little time in Rufus, and a little time in the uh, boot thing, um, I think it's, uh, yeah, the prompt basically, and I had to type in a certain command to actually get to the installer, and it took a very long time to install. That's really more than I can say. But I'm happy that everything actually works, I didn't have to download any, you know, texts or any drivers or anything, everything worked right out of the box, which is actually pretty impressive because, you know, with my Hackintoshes, I usually have to download Kex, install drivers, but everything worked right out of the box for this uh, Linux project. So anyways, moving on, I have tested this, you know, for a couple days, that's why I really didn't upload this video immediately, because I want to take some time to actually try it out, and it seems to work great for most things. I can browse the web with Ethernet, because Wi-Fi drivers just don't work, I have a USB Wi-Fi driver, but this doesn't really work. So I have to use Ethernet, and it works pretty well for browsing the web and simple things. I actually like the file manager a lot better than the Windows file manager. I, I just feel, I mean, in Linux Mint, it's very close to what's on Mac OS, and it's very organized. I really like it. Also, the Linux Mint start menu is also very expansive and had a lot of new programs that I could try out, which I found interesting while testing it. The trackpad, keyboard, everything worked right out of the box, as I previously mentioned, so I really had no problems there. I really didn't do too much testing, didn't really go in depth, but I basically wanted to show you guys what's possible that you can actually speed it up. Slick Linux for the PowerPC. Now I really don't have much else to say, I did, again, again, I didn't really do much testing with it, but I did want to show you guys what I had come up with, because I mean it was pretty difficult to actually get everything installed, and not really much was done from there. However, I mean, if you guys want a full review, please let me know, I would really appreciate it. I mean, I would do more in-depth testing if you guys want me to do a review, but I'm just going to wait for you guys to tell me in the comments. Tell me what you guys think of this video idea, you know, installing legacy systems on old hardware. Well, not really legacy systems, new systems on old hardware. I just really want to know your guys' opinion because, I mean, the comments on my Hackintosh video, my previous video, it got some support and some guide, some a request for a guide, which I plan to do, so keep an eye out for that. And as for that power book, um, I don't think I'm going to be putting it in storage anytime soon. I'm um, still doing testing with Linux Mint, so yeah, I might release a full review, I might not. I still have to deal with school, you know. This is my backpack, so it's filled with homework. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. I really didn't want to spend too much time on this video because I have homework, I'm a student, and you know, uh, my... PC build actually kind of messed up on me. There's the BIOS screen that's just a blue screen, then it shuts off and restarts. So I'm back to using this Core 2 Duo machine for now. I'm still using my Alienware to edit all my videos though, so that's awesome. But until I get my PC build up and running, um, 
I doubt I can do any more expansions on it. And I plan on buying a new graphics card and everything, or maybe even building an entirely new PC and then showing that on video, so... I don't know. I just have a lot of plans for the future, so stay subscribed to keep up with it all. So anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for this Linux Mint video. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like. And thanks for watching. This is Ben Vasquez, signing out.